All right then, gang. So in this series, you're going to learn how to make a snake game with Python and Pygame. Now, to teach you how to do this, I brought Christian from Clear Code back to the channel. He's been here before to teach you how to make a Tetris game, and he's got loads of cool tutorials on his own channel as well. So definitely check him out. Anyway, I hope you enjoy making this project. It's a really fun one. And now I'm going to hand you over to Christian for the rest of the course. Hello there! In this tutorial, we are going to be creating a snake game. For that, we will be using Python along with Pygame. To follow along, you already have to know the basics of Python. It would also help if you know Pygame, at least the basics, but it's not strictly necessary. Now, if you want to have a full guide on the basics of Pygame, check out my separate video. Now, that being said, you could still follow along without knowing anything about Pygame. I will cover the basics. Just keep in mind that it's going to be a bit more challenging. Anyway, let's get started with the first part, where we are going to create the basic window along with the background. By the end of it, we are going to have something like this. Now before we jump in, let's talk about our folder setup. I have one project folder along with three subfolders, audio, code and graphics. Audio is the easiest one, we simply have two files in there. Inside of graphics, we have an Apple image and then another folder with all of the parts of the snake. Finally, we have a code folder and this one at the moment contains two files, main and settings. Inside of this folder, we are also going to create a few more files later on, but this is what you need to have to get started. Let's have a look at the two files. In the code editor, you can see main.py at the moment has a single line where we import everything from settings. And settings.py contains a few more lines. Most importantly, we are importing Pygame. That line should make sense. If you want to use Pygame, we have to import it. In case, this line is giving you an error. So if you run main.py, run the code, you should be seeing Pygame CE along with the version of Pygame and your version of Python. If you don't get that, the error is probably that you don't have Pygame installed. If that happened, you want to go to the PowerShell and then type pip install pygame on Windows, or if you're on macOS, pip3 install pygame. Although in my case, I already have it installed, so I don't need to do that. Besides that, we are importing exit from sys and join from os.path. Exit is going to help us exit the window once we're done with the game, and join is going to help us import images. Other than that, we are setting a cell size, rows and columns. And from that, we are getting the window width and the window height. The basic idea of the game is that we have a window with a certain dimension that we are getting from window width and window height. These dimensions are dynamically set by the cell size along with the rows and the columns. Basically, we have a grid with rows and columns. And each cell inside of that always has, in our case, a size of 80 pixels. That covers both width and height. This 80, by the way, has to remain the same, simply because the graphics are designed for this pixel size. If you change it, you would also have to redesign the graphics. So better not do that, and if your window gets too large, change these numbers. Now just to do one example calculation, to get the window height, we want to multiply the rows by the cell size, which would be 10 times 80, so our window should be 800 pixels tall. Other than that, we have a couple of colors for the background, then we have the start size of the snake, and a couple of parameters for the shadow. None of which you really need for now. What is much more important is that we have to create a basic window. All of that is going to happen inside of main.py. In there, I want to create a new class that I'm going to call main. This class does need inheritance, but it does need a dunder init method without any custom parameters, but we will always need self. In there, we want to create, let's say, a general setup section, where we have to do three major things. Number one, we have to initiate Pygame. This we do with pygame.init. This line is really important because it initializes all of the basics of Pygame. But that's basically it. Just make sure you include it, but then you can kind of forget about it. After that, we will need a display surface. Let's save it as an attribute, self.display underscore surface. And this we get with pygame.display.set underscore mode. 
This creates the basic window and it wants a tuple with the width and the height. This we have created inside of settings with window width and window height. Let me copy window width, this would be our width, and then the window height would be the window height. This would already create a window, which means if we are now creating an instance from this class with main equals main, then we are getting a window for one frame. But it doesn't stay open because the code finishes after this line, so the window disappears. To fix that, we will need another method that I usually call run. Still doesn't need any custom parameters, and in there we are creating a while through loop. That way our code only finishes once we tell it to finish. In there we have to do two things. Number one, we want to create an event loop. This event loop allows us to capture user input, and user input also includes stuff like closing the window. And only run this method once you have the event loop in place. What we want to do is for event in pygame.event.get. That way we get access to all of the events. And for now, we want to check if event.type is equal to pygame.quit. If that is the case, we know the user wants to exit the game. If that is the case, we want to run pygame.quit. That uninitializes pygame. On top of that, we want to run the exit method, the one we imported earlier inside of settings. The reason why we need both is that pygame.quit is only quitting pygame. It doesn't quit Python itself. And Python would, for example, be this while true loop, meaning we want to do both and then we are finishing the game. There's just one more thing that we need, and that is pygame.display.update. That way we tell Pygame to draw whatever we are creating in this while true loop. For now, since we're not doing anything, this line isn't particularly useful, but we should include it. It's good form. Either way, now we can run main.run, and now we have a window that we can also close. That looks really good. Perfect. After we have that, we have to create the background. And there are two parts to that. On the window, we want to have a checkerboard pattern meaning we have a darker rectangle and then a lighter rectangle and then the darker rectangle again. And this continues forever over the entirety of the game. Stuff like this. The way we are going to approach that is we are filling the entire background with one of the colors. Doesn't really matter which one it is. On top of that, we are then going to draw the checkerboard pattern, but we only ever do it on the second line or the second column. That way, we only have to worry about one rectangle on top of it. Filling the background color is really easy. We have two colors in our colors section. Let's start with light green, and all you really have to do to fill the background is inside of the while true loop get self dot display surface and then the fill method, along with the color. And now we have a green background that looks really good. Now we have to figure out how to get the checkerboard pattern. And for that, we will need rectangles. Those I want to create inside of the dunder init method. Let's call this part game objects. Basically, what I want to do is create another object. Let's call it BG rectangles. And this has to be a list of pygame.rect objects. In case you don't know, pygame.rect is just a rectangle. And when you create it, you have to set the left, the top, the width, and the height. And after that, you have a rectangle that you could, for example, use for drawing. For example, what we could be doing is create a rectangle at position 0 for left, 0 for top, and the width would simply be the cell size. Same for the height. That way, if this is our window, and I should mention the origin point of this window is in the top left, up here. This position would be 0 and 0. The same position we have set here for the top left of this rectangle, which means this rectangle would be in the top left, it would be 80 pixels wide and 80 pixels tall. And to use that, we want to add one more method. Let's call it draw bg. Without any custom parameters, and what we want to do, we want to cycle over the list. And remember, right now we have a list with one rectangle inside. 
For that, the for loop would be for rect in self dot bg rects. In there, we can call pygame dot draw dot rect, which is drawing a rectangle, and it wants to have three arguments: a surface to draw on. This would be our self dot display surface. After that, it wants to have a color. Let's say for now red. And finally, we want to have a rectangle to draw. That would be the rectangle we have just created, which we're getting via the for loop. So in here, we just need rect. Finally, we have to call the draw bg method self dot draw bg. Don't forget to call it. And now we have a rectangle in the top left. That looks really good. What we could also do at this point is to use list comprehension to create more rectangles. Right now, we have a single one. But what we could be doing is something like pygame.rect or let's say call in range calls. Calls is what we have defined inside of settings, so this would be 16, which means the call we are getting here would be a number between 0 and 15, which is a number we could, for example, use for the left side of the rectangle. And remember, the first argument is the left side and the second argument is the top of the rectangle. Which means in our case for the left side, if we change this to call times cell underscore size and run all of this again, we now get a rectangle for every column in the top row. To make this a bit more interesting, we could work with the range method. In there, for example, we could start from zero go all the way to the columns, but then only get every second column. If we now run this again, we only get every second column. In case the range method is a bit confusing, if you only add one argument, you always start from zero and go up to the highest number, but you don't include the highest number. So in our case, 15. However, if you add a first number and a final number, then you can customize the starting point and the step size. So in our case, we start from zero and then we go in increments of two, meaning in this case, we are skipping the one and go straight to a two. List comprehensions are incredibly powerful and one of the best features of Python. As a matter of fact, to finish up this part of the series, we can do an exercise. I want you guys to try to create one list comprehension to get the entire checkerboard pattern. It is definitely possible and I can show you in just a second how to do it, although you will have to be a bit creative about getting there. But try to see if you can figure this one out. If you understand the system, it's actually fairly straightforward and it's going to make you feel incredibly powerful. But pause the video now and try to figure this one out on your own. Let's go through it together. We already have a good amount, but I'm running a bit out of space, which means I want to put all of this over two lines so it's a bit easier to read. If I run the code, this is not going to change anything. Now, first of all, we have to add a second for loop for all of the vertical parts. Let's call it for row in range rows. And I realized this call along with this call is probably better in lowercase letters. With that, we have a second for loop that gives us access to the rows. The first part would be the column, the second part would be the row. So this is what we want to target. All we want in here is the row multiplied with the cell underscore size. If we now run the code, that is not looking too bad. Although we have to create an offset, meaning this would be our first row. And on the second row for this one, we want to move all of the blocks one field further to the right. How can we do that? For that, we have to target the column again, or the left side of the rectangle. And essentially, whenever we are on an even row, then we want to add an integer of one to it. So first of all, we have to know if we are on an even or an odd row. That we can check with row, then mod, and then divide it by two. If that number is zero, then we know the current row is even or odd, which means this equation would return true. That we can use via the int method to turn true into one. And that value we want to add to the column. Finally, we have to put all of this into brackets. And now we have the checkerboard pattern. 
last thing we have to do is to replace this red with the actual color. This we get from settings, we want to use dark green. Place it in there, and now we have the proper background. And I think this list comprehension is still a bit confusing. So let me go through it one more time before we finish. We have a list comprehension with two for loops. One for the column and one for the rows. The one for the rows I think is really simple. This one should be fairly straightforward. The one for the columns is also quite easy, except we have a start value and a step size, but that's about it. The more complicated part is when we are using that information to create a rectangle. In there, we are defining the left side of the rectangle, we are defining the top of the rectangle, and finally, we are defining the size of the rectangle, so width and height. Width and height are super easy, they're both just the cell size, so those we can just ignore. The top of the rectangle is also fairly easy. We simply get the row and multiply it with the cell size, the row coming from the second for loop. Only the left side should be a challenge. And basically all we are doing is, first of all, we are looking at the column, which we're getting from the first for loop. To that, we are adding integer of the row mod 2, and we are checking if this is zero or not. The formula itself is going to return true on an even row and false on an odd row, which we are then converting via the int method to a one or a zero. That way, our starting value would be either zero or one for every single row. This would combine all of this bit here. And finally, we are multiplying that with the cell size to go from numbers like zero, one, and two to the actual cell size in pixels. So I hope all of that makes sense. Now there are two more very minor things that I want to change before we are finishing this part. First of all, I want to give the window a title. This we do with pygame.display.set underscore caption. Let's call it snake. Finally, when we are creating the instance of the object and call the run method, we only want to do that if dunder name is equal to the string dunder main. That way we ensure that we only run the main method. With that, we have the first part covered. So next up, we can work on. By the way, if you want to watch this entire course now without YouTube adverts, you can do. It's all up on the NetNinja website, netninja.dev. You can buy the course for $2 to get instant access to all of it, or you can sign up to NetNinja Pro and get instant access to all of my courses without adverts, as well as premium courses not found on YouTube, including my Udemy ones. That's $9 a month, and you can get your first month half price when you use this promo code right here. So I'm going to leave this link down below in the video description for you to sign up. And I really hope you enjoy this series, and please do not forget to share, subscribe, and like the videos. That really helps a lot, and I'm going to see you in the very next lesson.